take it to a new level. Now right, let's go out here and do what we do, baby. It's Sunday night. Yeah. If you want to beat somebody, tonight is the night. Let's go out here and ball and become 5-0. and oh. Here we go, back on three. One, two, three, back. Woo! So Brett Favre comes out for the 242nd consecutive time he starts. That's regular season starts. He's also started 20 playoff games over that period. Took over for Don Nikoski in September of 92 and right now October of 07 and having a great season. He's on a pace to set a career best in passing yardage from the 17. This time they'll start with the run and that's unusual in and of itself as Deshaun win a seventh round draft choice out of Florida picks up a first down on a 12 yard run through the middle for Mike McCarthy's team. You know and that's the the thing that Mike McCarthy said is we want to go two backs. We want to run our big play which is a lead -o. the fullback leads the offensive the off guard the right guard comes from the other side. So you get a double lead in that hole. That is the base of the run offense of the Green Bay Packers. They let Amon Green leave in the offseason. He went to Houston, win as a seventh round draft choice. Here's a slant to Donald Driver, his favorite receiver. That's a gain of seven. Here is the Green Bay offense. Brett Farr, University of Southern Mississippi. Deshaun Wynn, Florida. Corey Hall. Boise State University. Donald Driver, Alcorn State. Greg Jennings, Western Michigan. Donald Lee, Mississippi State. Chad Clifton, Tennessee. Darren College, Boise State. Scott Wells, Tennessee. Junius Coffin, North Carolina AT. Mark Tauscher, Wisconsin. Tauscher and Clifton, each in his eighth season. The guards are young. The center, Wells, is in his fourth year. There's Earl Acker in the middle for Chicago. Favre off the play fake, throws to the outside. That's caught by Jennings, who caught that record-setting touchdown pass last week in Minnesota to eclipse the Marino mark. Tackled by Tillman, who comes off the injured list he missed last week. You know, this is what, this is what the Packers do. I mean, we see them. They run that lead -o we talk about. Then they come back and they throw a slant, and then they come back and they throw another slant. It's just where the, the again you know I was talking about the passing game of the Packers they don't have great pass protection so most of the passes are of the shorter variety and Brett Favre throws them almost perfectly on the ground again this is win and win with another big run through the middle what do you mean they have no running game to the 10 yard line tackled there by Danielle Manning and the crowd goes wild. I think we've been able to run the ball like that. We just, you know, haven't came together in the past four games like we did tonight. And, you know, O-line did a good job. Had some real big holes up in there. And uh, Corey Hall did a good job blocking on the linebackers, especially Erlacher. And it was just, you know, a lot of big creases in there. The running game, you know, that's what we came out here to do. We came out and uh, coach put an emphasis on the running game and we were able to establish the run early. It all starts right here. Right in the middle, Wells gets that block, stays with a nose tackle, gets him to the outside, and Deshaun Wynn just runs right off him. 44-yard run. Wynn again. Wynn came into the game averaging 3.8 yards per carry, league average 4.1. He was the second of the rookies to be chosen. They went for Brandon Jackson out of Nebraska in the second round, but he's been hurt. Wynn taking advantage of that opportunity, and the other running back is Morenci, who's been hurt as well, but he's ready to play again. Did you see Wynn on that long run, though? You, you know that he doesn't have great speed. When you break away and you get out there in the open and you look back, that means that you don't have great speed because if you have speed and you get out in the open no one's going to catch you. Second and goal as you saw second in passing last in rushing. Morenci's the back. He takes the inside give. Morenci fighting his way down to the one yard line. Morenci who came over from the Houston Texans and a deal that sent Sam Congato to Houston last year tackled by Briggs who missed last week's game. Briggs hurt himself in the Dallas game, missed a week, but he's back at linebacker. There's Lance. You know, you watch you watch the Packers and you say that there's no way they could run the ball. They've thrown over 70% of the time. And then they come out and Mike McCarthy says, we are going to run the ball. And you think bare defense, you're not going to. But doggone, they're, they're proving they can. Out of the power eye, there goes Wynn in for the touchdown. touchdown.
Lovey Smith did not expect that. You know, you talk about Deshaun Wynn being a seventh round draft choice. The fullback that is leading him there, Corey Hall, number 35, is also a seventh round draft choice rookie. And he's a rookie that didn't even play fullback in college. He was a linebacker at Boise State. And, and he's had a couple of good lead blocks. Sometimes there's information overload, but that needs to be just absorbed for a second. The Bears with 21 quarterbacks, and there they are. There's the list ever since Favre took over as the starter here. He hasn't missed a game. Here's the 21st in Greasy, and he hits Clark, who gets dumped immediately by Bigby for a loss of one. Here's the Chicago offense. Brian Greasy, University of Michigan. Cedric Benson, University of Texas. Jason McKee, Temple. Moussin Muhammad, Michigan State University. Bernard Berrien, the one and only Fresno State. Desmond Clark, Wake Forest University. John St. Clair, Virginia. Ruben Brown, Pitt. Olin Cruz, University of Washington. Roberto Garza, Texas A&M, Kingsville. Fred Miller, Baylor University. And that line hoping to lead the way for an improved running game. Their running game has been nothing to write home about either as Cedric Benson carries for a couple. Benson taking over when Thomas Jones was dealt to the New York Jets. He's going to be the workhorse, but so far, not very good. 3.2 per carry this season. Yeah, and Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, said that, you know, that he had to get to the run and stay with the run the whole game, that that was going to be one of the keys to what they're doing. Now, it's not only running the ball. Everyone says you have to run the ball. You have to run the ball successfully and not end up in these situations. They put Devin Hester in the game, and the special teams maven runs a pattern but Johnny Jolly number 97 gets his arms up to knock it down fourth down here's the Packers second possession now it begins from the 22 yard line seven play drive five rushes for a touchdown on the first drive fake draw buys time far goes to the outside and under throws the intended receiver driver let's take a look at the Chicago D Adewale Ogunleya, Indiana University. Tommy Harris, the University of Oklahoma. Darwin Walker, University of Tennessee. Mark Anderson, Alabama Crimson Tide. Hunter Hillenmeyer, Vanderbilt. Brian Erlacher, University of New Mexico. Lance Briggs, University of Arizona. Charles Tillman, the University of Louisiana. Adam Archuleta, Arizona State. Brandon McGowan, the U, Maine. Danielle Manning, Abilene Christian. They're still minus Nathan Vasher, one of their starting corners, and through the middle again, up to the 25-yard line, goes Vernon Morenci. He's tackled there by Tommy Harris. Favre out of the gun. Has time. Over the middle, it's James Jones, a great-looking rookie out of San Jose State, who caught touchdown pass number 422 last week. Jones with tremendous hands, a third-round pick. 23-yard gain, first down Packers. You know, if you say, what's the difference in Brett Favre this year, I would say his confidence in his wide receivers, including James Jones. Like you said, a rookie from San Jose State. I mean, and, and the thing that Brett Favre does now is he spends more time with his receivers on an individual basis, talking to them about what he sees and about what they see. He's more like a player coach. From the 48-yard line, he hands the ball off on first down. To Morenci, a gain of two, second and eight. Far throws, caught on the outside by Ruvel Martin. And Martin, who had a big night on New Year's Eve in Chicago, gets forced out of bounds by Archuleta and another first down for Green Bay. You see what Martin did on that one? He caught the slant, which is an inside pattern, but instead of coming in, coming across this way, he goes back out. You see the cushion right there, he cuts the slant. Now instead of continuing this way in the slant, he cuts back and goes to the outside and picks up another 10 yards. You saw Archuleta one arm in there because he's got that right arm, he, the broken hand, in a cast. And you also saw Danielle Manning, who's moved from safety to corner. And Favre gets sacked. They do get in, they get penetration that time, and it's Tommy Harris who will get credit for the Chicago sack. And that's when the when the bear defense is really is really rushing the passer well. They're getting pressure up the middle from Tommy Harris because everyone is going to get it from from the outside. But when you can get an inside pass rusher like Tommy Harris was, he just got Darren College. He just got on his outside shoulder 
That's that three technique that they talk about. And he just powered right through college's outside shoulder. Second and 14. They had Marenzi and Grant both in the backfield. They send Lee in motion. Far will throw, finds the seam, and finds Donald Driver as he's been doing for nine seasons. And Driver takes it to the 26 yard line, about four yards shy of a first down. Bear defense against Favre. And as you can see, the Bear defense has picked him off nine times, just one touchdown pass. They shut him out here last year on opening day. Then Chicago. On New Year's Eve, they had nothing to play for. We did that game on a Sunday night last year. Green Bay came in and won their fourth consecutive victory to end the season. And they have added four more at the beginning of this year. So an overlap eight-game winning streak for the Green Bay Packers. It's third and four. You see that formation there? Brett Favre said every time they get in that formation with Bubba Franks, who just caught that ball, it's going to be a pass. Lee over the middle, one of their two tight ends. And so Favre on third down and four is able to convert. They move the chains. And this drive has already consumed eight plays. Green Bay 142 yards. Chicago two. First and ten at the 19-yard line. Three wide receivers. They've used a lot of that this year. And again a slant. And this time it is, it is ruled a catch and a fumble. Jones losing the ball and then Manning Jr. picks it up and goes out of bounds. The question is will it stand and of course we put the kibosh on Jones by talking about the great hands he has and then he coughs the ball up. They're coaching it down there to, to get the ball out and we're coaching it up here to put the thing away and, and we didn't put it away fast enough. They talk about high and tight and that, that's what they mean by it. you can't have the ball down there at the belt level at this you're asking for you're asking for trouble. It's a takeaway game defensively. Um, it's the first first game we've really gotten the type of takeaways that we're used to. But you need uh, somebody to step up and get it started. He ran a dart route, which is a, a quick slant. And when he caught the ball, I don't think he had full possession of it as far as just, I think he was trying to switch, switch arms. And I went in and I tried to make the tackle. And uh, as I was tackling him, I punched it first, then tried to wrap my body around him and just Bring him to the ground and ball right now. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands as a completed catch and interception. Green Bay will be charged with their first team timeout. This is Benson going nowhere. A.J. Hawk is there first. Let's take a look at the Green Bay starting defense. Aaron Campman, Iowa Hawkeyes. Ryan Pickett, Ohio State University. John Jolly, Texas a &M. Colin Jenkins, Central Michigan. Brady Papinga, Brigham Young. Nick Barnett, Oregon State. A.J. Hawk, The Ohio State University. Charles Woodson, University of Michigan. Atari Bigby, Amsterdam Admirals. Nick Collins, Bethune Cook. Al Harris, A&M Kingsville. 11 years ago, Woodson and Greasy, teammates at the University of Michigan and again that Chicago running game Benson was the fourth guy pick in the 05 draft third and six Greasy under pressure gets the pass off to Benson and Benson will be a yard shy of the first down Morenci is the running back they begin this drive to the Packers at their own 24 yard line Darwin Walker is out of the game Anthony Adams takes his spot and this is Morenci swinging to the outside, and Morenci gets tackled at the 26 by Harris. So with Walker hurt, we'll get a word on him in a minute. But Dusty Dvorak, another tackle, John, went out on opening day. He was a starter. And we haven't even talked about Tank Johnson, who couldn't stay out of trouble with the law. They had to get rid of him, and he's waiting to be activated by Dallas down the line. And he's going to check to a pass. What is now this is cover two. Ryan Grant's the running back. A slant. Boy, they just worked that slant so beautifully. And this is Donald Driver. Slants and crosses and slants and crosses. And that's been what Green Bay's passing attack has basically been through the first four games plus a quarter. 26 yards. You know, and that's and that's the thing. The ball doesn't stay in the air very long, and it doesn't stay in Brett Favre's hands very long. You see, boom, right there, he puts it right on Donald Driver. And if you watch the other end of that, and when Brett Favre goes back, it's one, two, three, and that ball is out of there. 
But the but the, the key to the success of this offense is they have to run for yards after they catch a ball. And they do it. They do it very well. Another slant, another catch. And this is Jones. And Jones, again, with Tillman there, putting it on the ground. And Chicago's recovered. So Jones and Favre was just talking about Jones and the great hands he has and the speed and he's fumbled the ball twice tonight and that again with Tillman it's the second time he's punched it out this time Archuleta broken hand and cashed them all with the recovery. Well, I knew I had success the first time so I figured what the hell why not try it again and uh, kind of got lucky it, it, it came out again. I did the same exact thing you know I just tried to go in there and punch it with my with my right hand and I I got luck again, the ball came out, you know, Adam Archler was running to the ball and he got an early Christmas present. Chicago from its 18 now, swinging it to the outside. This is Greg Olson, their rookie tight end, number one draft choice out of Miami. Through the middle goes Benson and Chicago finally picks up its first first down, some 17 minutes into the game. Hester is back in the game. They haven't used him on offense yet, even though he's been in for a couple of plays. This is Benson going to the outside, and Benson gets taken down at the 34-yard line. Kabir Baja Biamila makes the stop. Third and seven. Five-man rush, and he swings it out this time to Adrian Peterson. And Peterson breaks the tackle and then goes out of bounds. So a third down conversion for Chicago, breaking out of a Jared Bush tackle. So they wanted to go to work on Bush in the passing game, and then he can't make the tackle again, and that's a 30-yard gain. And here's Adrian Peterson right here. He's the halfback, and you see they just catch everyone to the inside. Good block right there, and there's no one at all on Adrian Peterson. Would you see that block? That yeah. was Devin Hester. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the, the guy that could do a number of things. I didn't know it included that. I didn't either. Neither did Nick Collins, the safety. Uh, he depleted Collins. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. They're going to run Hester on an end around. And Collins can't make the tackle there, but he's able to slow him up enough that Hester goes down at the 31 yard line they want to get you know every time you have a, a, a player like Hester who's a, a returner you keep saying I got to get him into the action more I got to you know I got to run him on offense a little bit more that's what they want to do that's his first career carry and of course they want to use him in the passing game as well right and, and that's the thing you know they can't put him in there and have a trick play to him every time sometimes they have to put him in there leave him in for a series let him just play wide receiver and then to get the ball in his hands, a reverse is a pretty good play. Hard to sneak him in to the outside of the fullback. This is Jason McKee's first action of the night. He's tackled by Woodson, but Chicago's moving right now on a drive that began at their own 18-yard line. They've marched 57 yards in seven plays. They'll run Benson now through the middle, and he'll pick up four. He gets to the 21-yard line, so another third down coming up for the Chicago Bears it'll be third down and five now and Ron Turner the offensive coordinator can start to call plays like he wants to you know sometimes you say well why didn't you run more when you throw more when you get the ball to Hester but if you don't get first downs you don't have those opportunities now conversely when you start getting first downs, then you're going to get more plays and more play calls and more opportunities for everyone they have Mark Bradley and Hester in the game here called a third and six at the 21 yard line and this is Peterson so they spread it out and then they run the third down back over left guard for a gain of two it'll be fourth down at the 19 yard line and they'll have to settle for a Robbie Gold field goal attempt of about 38 yards they spotted at the 26 it'll be a 36 yard attempt Brad Maynard to hold it Pat Manley who's been a great snapper for years puts it in play and gold boots it through and the Bears right now can send a big thank you note to Charles Tillman for those two strips There's a penalty marker down at the 16 yard line if this is against Green Bay they'd have a first down here because right now it's fourth down and three so Chicago could be presented with the opportunity to take points off the board something Lovey Smith actually did last week against Detroit at the end of the game. 
Yeah, that was a time where he needed 10 points at the end of the game, and he took the three off to go for the seven, and he got yeah. the seven, but he didn't get another opportunity. Well, that for may the happen three. again here. Illegal formation on the defense. Yeah. Number 99 lined up, head up, over the center. That's a five-yard penalty. That five yards results in a first down. No, we're trying to win the game. You don't normally when you get field goals instead of touchdowns, they come back to hunt you. So no, there was no hesitation at all. That was an easy one there. There he is right there. Remember they put a rule in a couple of years ago that you can't line up over the center. I'm not sure that he was exactly over the center. He looked like he was in that gap, but they didn't want the guys lining up. Remember the old deal in, in high school and on, on, the, on the playground where you tan the center? Yeah. Meanwhile, here's Benson to the eight yard line. So the question is, can they take advantage of what is kind of like, you know, an iffy call? I agree with you, John. You know, it's just it's one of those things where it's, it's so close. You can call it either way. Right. I think I think the Bears got a gift there because I know what the intent of the rule is that they don't want that guy lining up square on the center and just teeing off on. Him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't line up square and center. He's pointed in the other way, nor did he tee off on the center. Second and seven from the 10. Benson goes to the outside. Benson will go to the end zone. Touchdown behind a Jason McKee block. And as we started to say before, a big thank you note goes out to Tillman from every Chicago fan right now because otherwise this game could be, it could have been 21-0, instead 7-0, and now 7-7 coming up. And here it is. It's just that lead draw play. The fullback leads the the halfback just delays a little, finds a hole, gives it time to develop, runs off his blocks. That was a good run by Cedric Benson. From the 26-yard line, the Green Bay Packers start this drive with a game tie, 7.45 to go in the half. Favre, the fake to the left, and then he hands the ball off to Morenci. He goes through the middle, gain a 10. Back to the field goal again. The rule says specifically, your helmet has to be outside the guys, the outside of his shoulder pads. But I agree with you, John. It's about intent, too, here. Right, and his helmet right there. See, so he puts his helmet outside the shoulder. But the intent, I mean, he didn't he didn't can the center, as they would say. Photo on the sideline supports what you saw on film. It, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation that that uh, Mike Pierre and I needed to have because we're I don't think we're all on the same page. Morenci, and all of a sudden, the Green Bay Packers with a, a major running game tonight across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Tackled there by Brandon McGowan. That is a gain of 15, and the Packers tonight already with 99 rushing yards. You know what you have to say? Where is Brian Erlacher? I mean, the middle linebacker has to make these plays. You see the right guard, Junius Costin, gets up on him, and once he gets on, uh, up on him, then Morenzi can get through that hole. But... The Packer line is doing a good job of blocking these bare front four and linebackers. Slant, and it's behind the intended receiver this time. It's Greg Jennings. <laughs> Second and eight after the timeout. Screen, reaching back for it is Morenci, and Morenci gets rolled down inbounds at the 43-yard line. Third down and two. Far going deep on third and two. The pass is right there, and Greg Jennings for the touchdown. Here's Greasy throwing to the outside, and that's caught by Mohammed, and he'll pick up the first down before he's tackled, and a flag is thrown. As going around the helmet of the tackle was Al Harris. Face mask, five yards. Number 31, defense. We'll add five yards to the end of the run. First down, Chicago. You know, this is the other half of that matchup. We showed uh, Woodson and Berrien, and this is this side. It's it's Al Harris against Moose and Muhammad. Al Harris usually plays plays physical and gets the hit on the line of scrimmage. He didn't get the hit on the line of scrimmage. He got it laid up there. You can get it in that first five yards. I didn't see the penalty. Here is Benson, and Benson, who's been taking a little bit of heat in Chicago because he's yet to emerge, 
showing a little something tonight with a touchdown run a little burst right here he takes the ball for a gain of 11 that'll move the chains first down at the 33 yard line first and 15 and on a draw it is smelled out perfectly by Green Bay you had Papinga blitzing you had Bishop coming in through the middle and Benson gets met by Barnett as he takes the handoff you know, we we talked about the the Packer defense and and one of the things that they don't do is they don't blitz much and I think they kind of surprise the Bears I mean they're going to run a lead draw into that hole and Papinga and Barnett blitz right into the hole that they were going to run the ball in. I'm just I'm just picking up y'all crumbs now. You know Third and 20 screen to the left side to Peterson not much room there and he gets tackled at the 40 yard line by Nick Barnett fourth down. This time it's an inside handoff and Morenci will get taken down at the 18 yard line and we go to the two minute warning. Green Bay has one timeout. Green Bay has three wide receivers. The Bears are in nickel. Fake inside handoff and Favre throws. Risky pass. Caught. They'll get away with it. Flag comes in. Donald Driver makes the catch. Ricky Manning Jr. on the tackle. You know, he will do that, Brett Favre. Risky pass and get away with it. I think that's been one of the, the keys this year. You know, they say that you know, he hasn't had any interceptions. Number 80. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. It'll come back because it's on driver. Second and 16. Because there's, there's been some opportunities for interceptions, but sometimes he throws them so hard you just drop them. This time he hands it to Morenci, swinging to the outside. And he looked to, as if he wanted to stay in bounds for a second, then decides to stop the clock. Flag is down here at the 15. Larry Nembers. I see Deshaun Wynn is is back on the sideline. He's he holding, came in. Defense number 71. That's a five-yard penalty automatic. First down. First and 10, 14 yard line. Far out of the gun. This is his third cadence. Yeah. The good lay almost jumped off. Morenci. Morenci. Stays inbounds up at the 30 yard line. Picks up the first down. Tackled by McGowan against Green Bay with just one timeout on the way down the field. That's a 17 yard gain. See, and that's 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 the secret to this offense is take those short passes and make long gains out of them. Four man rush. They go to Morency again, and this time he gets tackled head up by Lance Briggs. Morency's had a, a very active first half tonight. Nine carries and four receptions and he gets shaken. He has to come out. So now you've got Win out and you got Morency going out and Ryan Grant will Second come in. Six from the 35. This is playing the hand you're dealt. From the gun again a four man rush. They'll go to Grant and Grant will pick up the first down. But he stays in bounds. They're up at the 43 yard line. Pretty much time for Favre to spike it here with that one timeout remaining and the clock ticking yeah. down to a half a he minute. He better get up and spike it. He does. And then fakes, fakes like he's throwing to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> to the outside, to Morenci, he's got to get out of bounds and does, but that's only a short gain to the 46. That takes. Five seconds, and you've got 27 ticks right now, and a third down and six at the 46 yard line. Far pressured from behind, gets away from a shirt tackle, and then hits Greg Jennings over the middle at the 26 yard line, and that's a first and 10. And Far will now, and Green Bay take its final timeout. 
Brett was ready. Brett, well, Brett wanted to do, you can see, he wanted to get up and spike it and save the timeout, but the timeout was called on the sidelines, and so Brett getting into it now with McCarthy because the coach can call a timeout. You can see what Brett wanted. I'm going to spike it, save the timeout. Now they've used the last timeout, which makes them have to play this last 16 seconds differently. Right, and this is the area that we were talking about, you know, that deep dig or deep in right there. You see, you have Donald Driver shorter than the, than the other receiver, Greg Jennings, coming in behind him, and you get right there in the middle, which is the weakness in this defense. Now it becomes different. You don't want to wind up with something in the middle of the field where you get tackled and can't get another playoff. That's why Brett wanted to save the timeout, but McCarthy called it. First and ten. Favre throws. Now it's over the middle. Now it's caught at the 20-yard line. Manning makes the tackle on Bubba Franks. Now Favre's got to get up and spike the ball and set up the field goal attempt. And he does. And now they'll settle for a, an attempt by Crosby of about 39 yards. All of a sudden, the Bear defense is becoming a, a major problem at the 36-yard line. Here's Benson, and the offense has been a problem coming into tonight, and they've got to attempt to do something. Bigby makes the tackle, but John, the Bears have been built on defense. They had a meltdown in the second half against Dallas. They gave up 34 in the fourth quarter against Detroit, and to give up 341 yards and a half against anybody is astonishing. You know, and then Lovey Smith has to be thinking about that running yardage because Brett Favre did light him up, but the Green Bay Packer running game kind of got him started in that area, and Bears have always prided themselves in stopping that stuff. Greasy threads the needle over the middle and goes to Desmond Clark. And if he has a favorite receiver, it would be Clark because he was the backup to Grossman over the last year and a third. Clark's the one guy he knew best from his years in Denver. Third and seven. They have Devin Hester flanked to the left. And Greasy with that play clock going all the way down Three took too much time. Five yard penalty. Still third down. From the 36 yard line. He throws, that's caught, and there's the difference between seven and 12. You're on a slant, you get nine. Instead of a first down, it's a fourth down. Woodson makes the tackle on Berry. And Maynard will hold it. Manley will snap it to try to make it a one possession game. And Robbie Gold is able to bang it through to make it 17 to 10. That was a very good drive by the Bears and kind of gets them back in this thing. Now their defense has to step up. Gold's kick to Williams from the two. Tremont Williams out past the 40. He gets by Gold. He'll get chased out from behind. But the Packers will have a short field as Rasheed Davis saves a touchdown. Yeah, but before the defense can step up, the coverage team had better step up, and they didn't. This is another area that the Bears pride themselves in. You know, special teams. Yeah, and here the Packers just take it to him. I mean, he gets into the wedge. That's just poor, poor coverage there. I mean, there was no one down there in the lane. Missed tackle right there, and they finally get him. That is a 65-yard run back. Jermon Williams, free agent, went to school at Louisiana Tech. First and 10, Favre begins at the 33-yard line. You've got Wynn back in the game. He started the game, cramped up, didn't play after the first series. The fake to him, then they pass it to him. And Wynn, a seventh-round pick out of Florida, where he played for the national champion Gators, takes it to the 20. Wynn was terrific on that opening drive of the game. He had four carries for 59 yards and then didn't play at all for the rest of the half. You know, and this is one of the things that Brett Favre and the, the Packer offense has done as well as anyone for years, and that's a screen pass, where you invite the pass rush up, you just sneak the back out to the side, get two linemen in front of them, and that's like a sweet play, and, and, and it has been since Mike Holmgren came here. From the 20-yard line. Takes it to the left. Up the middle again to the seventh round pick. That's win for a gain of six. Down to the 14 yard line. Second and four. They call wins number again. He gets taken down and there was Adams after Erlacher made the initial contact. Stopped uh, about a yard shy of a first down. 
And again, it's win, and they do make a play. So at least they take away the opportunity for a touchdown. That is Briggs, who steps up and at least limits Green Bay to a field goal attempt after this was set up by the run back by Williams. Yeah, you look at this defense, and I'm surprised when you get, you know, two guys right in here and then the linebackers fill in here. I'm surprised that, that Brett Favre didn't get out of this run and go to a pass. I mean, they didn't have a chance with those two tackles and those A-gaps and slanting outside. There was no place to run at all. Ten-point game from the 40-yard line on first down. This is Cedric Benson finding no room at all. Near your screen, the key sets up as the fullback and provides leverage for Benson, who doesn't go very far up to the 47 yard line. Second down, Jones going to the New York Jets, greasy with a play fake, and he winds up going to the rookie. And that's a great tackle by A.J. Hawk, flagged down here after Greg Olson makes the catch. A.J. Hawk is a guy that the Packer people would hope would step up a little. They said that. You know, they watch him in film and in there games, and he's just not face. showing up a lot. Number 31. That's a five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Second penalty tonight on the cornerback, Al Harris. It is second down and 10 from the Green Bay 49-yard line. Benson. Benson to the 47-yard line. And, uh, not a lot opening up in the middle. He's had a couple of decent runs tonight, but for the most part, plodding along here. And Benson is uh, he's averaging less than three yards a carry. Right, and they got in a, a run formation that time. They only had one ride wide receiver. They went two tight ends, two running backs. So what they were trying to do is to get Greasy a like third and three or four and not be in the third and long. They ran the ball with a power formation, and he's still third and long. Third down and eight from the gun. Under pressure, stepping up, nowhere. Tackled at the 49, the middle backer, Nick Barnett, the number one pick of the Packers back in 03, stopping him. So Chicago will punt. It's first and 10 now at the 10 yard line. They start with a run, they start with win. Second down and five. Win again. Now Far is going to stop. He's going to dump it, and there's that risky pass that comes back to bite you because it's Erlocker who comes up with the football. Bad decision on my part. Been making good decisions. That was a bad decision. Um, I should have thrown it away. Uh, really. I was throwing it to James Jones on a little underneath route and you know say I do complete it we get a yard or two I, I don't know but at that stage in in the game or really any stage that play was was dead from the start so I was trying to make something out of nothing on that one. Now Greasy will try to cash in quickly and it is out of bounds. Oh, he's forced out. Touchdown. Greg Olson was forced out. He came down out of bounds, but he was forced out by the defender and it's a touchdown. We knew what we were going to get all week when, when me and Des went out to the outside receivers. You know, we had four guys. We had two receivers on the inside, two tight ends on the outside, and they had to make a decision. Either they had to walk linebackers out on us or play safeties and play with no safeties in the middle of the field. And, uh, and then it was just a matter of making the play. You could sit there and say he pushed off. You could say all kinds of things. I thought it was. A, I thought the coverage was good. I thought Atari was in was in good position. I thought Olsen jumped up and made, made, made a big time play. I thought it was a good catch by him. Whether he got his second foot down, I, I could see why you could say he did. It, it would have been close. But I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a nice play by Olsen. So now Brian Greasy, 11 out of 18 for 134 yards, starts this drive, swinging a pass to the outside and going to Greg Olson, the tight end. Minimal game. Second and 13. They run an inside give, and that goes nowhere. And that's a beautiful play up front. Corey Williams, number 99, fourth year out of Arkansas State, right there. And that makes it third down and 16 for the Bears. Yeah, and Corey Williams is one of those guys that 
is a pretty good player. He's a good athlete, and he he plays defensive tackle and defensive end. He's a good is a good run stopper, big body, pretty good pass rusher, but a very very athletic tackle. Third and 16 out of the gun. Greasy flanked by Adrian Peterson. Steps up. And the pass is incomplete. Al Harris with great coverage on Moose and Muhammad right there with him step for step and it's fourth down. This will be Maynard's sixth punt of the game. Woodson back. This is a beauty. Woodson has to back up at the 15. Finds a crease. Loses his balance. Loses the ball. And Chicago feels that they come up with the ball and they have right in front of Mike McCarthy. I think he got it anyway. Green Bay won't challenge. Greasy on a roll over the middle. Finds Bradley. And Bradley is forced out by Harris. Tracking him across the field. And Greasy again as he did the last time. Trying to take early advantage of a Green Bay turnover. You know the last time that the that the Bears had that ball this play was open Bradley on a cross and and they didn't get it to him Greasy didn't see him and I thought they have to come back with this one what you do is you run the coverage off on this side with Devin Hester you get everyone out of there and then you bring a crosser to that vacated area and it worked now Benson to the short side of the field nothing doing Collins comes up along with Woodson that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter we've got a ball game Green Bay trying to stay unbeaten <laughs> on second and nine and that one sails on him intended for Mohammed who was covered on the play by Frank Walker will be third down and nine either sailed or he knew one thing I'm not going to throw an interception down here in the red zone if I have a field goal I'm just going to throw the ball away now I still think this is the area that you know if Greg Olson is what you think he is that you know you try him down here. I think you can still work the middle. Right now they'd be looking at about a 41 yard game time field goal attempt if they gain nary a yard here third and nine. They have Devin Hester right down here. And then it's an inside handoff and they give it to Peterson and he takes it to the 18 yard line so they play it safe. And Robbie Gold will come out to attempt a field goal that will travel about 36 yards. Gold with a 36 yard attempt. And Gold's kick is good. Started out right at the right upright. Drew in. And we're tied. A little more beautiful in the first half for Green Bay fans right now. It's a 2020 game and Chicago has the ball and Benson will take the ball up to the 44 yard line where A.J. Hawk makes the tackle and we'll have a second down and six. You know Brian Greasy is is playing like a 10 year veteran tonight. And I was, we we're talking to him last night how you know, he really hadn't played much in two years and he was a little rusty last week and last week when I watched the film he looked rusty and tonight he doesn't. I mean he looks very calm. And very much in control. Second down and six. And this is Benson. And in many ways, a lot like his dad, who was always calm oh, yeah, and Bob, in control. Oh, oh, Bob Greasy was was something special. I mean, he, you know, Don Shula, Bob Greasy, you know, Paul Warfield, Zonka, Kick, that whole team, the last undefeated team. I don't even think they're starting to worry yet about what time do they start getting that champagne ready and stuff for someone to lose because they were the last undefeated team probably after the Indy New England game third down and seven Garrett Wolf is in the game as the back they flare him out he makes the catch in the flat but then he gets taken down by Barnett and there's a flag so he was stopped short of the first down but you have a flag on the sideline. Garrett Wolf, one of those guys that they think can make a big play. You know, if you just get him on a screen pass, on a loop or something Marshall like that, Powell, make someone 15 miss. Yard base pass, number 25. 15 yards added into the run. Automatic first down. Well, instead of a punt, which is what it would have been on a fourth down and five, it is Barnett. He's at 25. He meant 56. 
Well, and that is the 15 yard variety. I mean, that's not the kind where your hand just goes on it. I mean, that was when his hand went on and he just pulled his head down. First and 10 from the 39. That's a killer for the Green Bay Packers. All the way to the 39. Fresh set of downs. 11 minutes to go. I thought the, the bear offense has become kind of conservative also. Greasy now. Greasy throws into traffic, deflected and intercepted by Brady Papinga. Nick Collins deflected it and Papinga picks it off. And Papinga is Nick Barnett's best friend right now. Greg Olson, the intended receiver, and Chicago turns it over. You can see what happened to Brian Greasy. Here, the advantage of throwing on first down is if you don't have anything, just throw it away. You see, he just held it way too long, and he didn't have anything. Maybe he was trying to throw that away. Olson was the intended receiver. He got behind Collins along the sideline. Feet not set, couldn't get anything on it. First and 20 from the 13-yard line. Far rolling, chased by a and then he just underhands it about 30 yards. Only Brett. You know, as you say, you know, a 17-year veteran, what can't he do anymore? That's it. I mean, he used to be able to get in the pocket or run out of the pocket and still make a play, and he just can't run like he used to and still make that play. <laughs> But that play, once you get outside the tackle, then you know that you can throw it out of bounds, right. and that is legal. Brett, remember those three incompletions in the first half included two spikes. So in effect, he was 19 of 20. But here in the second half, he has been held in check. Second and 20. There's a little flip again, and he's lucky that that one wasn't picked off. Deshaun Wynn was able to swat it because Israel Adonijay was in the neighborhood where he could have had an easy pick. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about the Packers offense has become so conservative that the Bears aren't honoring anything deep anymore. They're just waiting for that. It was supposed to be a shovel pass is what it was supposed to be, and he was supposed to shovel that to Deshaun Wynn. You see, he's going to come like that, just throw it underhand, which is like a middle screen yeah. shovel pass, that type of play. Deshaun Wynn didn't look like he was ready for it, but even if he were, that play wasn't going anywhere. Uh, that's like a play he'd run in the parking lot, tailgating. He ran that same play last week. Third and 20. Over the middle, here's Morency, who played a lot in the first half and sparingly here. And the Green Bay Packers go three and out again. And the crowd got spoiled in the first half. <laughs> Benson to the outside. Nope. Nothing doing again. Aaron Campman and Charles Woodson are both there. The second down and 10. And Greasy will throw, and that is caught. What a catch by Greg Olson. That was another perfect ball. He put that ball, that's, you can't draw it on a fade pass, you know, high into the outside, away from the defender, and just kind of fade to the sidelines and, and make the play. So, you know, Greasy put that ball on the money. I think it, he pushed off. Did he? Yes, he pushed off. If you, watch, if you were watching the game, you'll yeah. see it. I mean, is that what you said to the ref then? Is that all the time. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, I can't blame that. All the good, good pass, good ball. Uh, they won. Four catches for Olsen, their number one draft choice out of Miami. Benson. And he'll run out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That will be a gain of six, second and four. Third down and four. They give it to him. And Peterson bends his way for what could be a first down. Let's see where they put the ball. Obviously, you see the yellow line and move it back a little bit, and that should be enough for a first down. Nemers is going to look over toward the chain gang and say, I want you guys to come on out. The Bears will rehuddle and start from the 42 on first and 10. In a 2020 game, clock ticking, down to three minutes. Now Benson. And Benson, this time with some tough running just when they need it to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of seven. And it will be second down and three. 
Benson. Benson won't get it. It's going to set up a third down and two. Green Bay will take its time out here with 2-11. The next stoppage comes at the two-minute warning, but the critical play of the game is the next play. Third down and two from the 34-yard line. And Greasy throws off the play fake to Desmond Clark. Touchdown, Chicago. Greasy and Clark, teammates in Denver. Reunited in Green Bay on a night when Chicago needs a win desperately. A lot of those short, you know, third down situations, we had uh, run the football, and they had been playing us quite a bit of man. So the tight, we like the matchups of our tight ends versus their guys. And uh, again, good play, good throw, good call, good throw, good protection. The execution all the way was, you know, of course was good. I said it enough, which wasn't a lot, to allow him to get over top of me and make, make the touchdown. So I don't remember if I slipped, but, I, you know, I've been on the run and they got me. We felt we were in field goal range. So if we didn't hit it, you know, we still had a chance to get the field goal and um, might give us a chance to make a play. And, and you know, guys executed well. Does a great job. Brian did a great job on it. And, and obviously the protection was good. So they did a great job of executing. The play is designed really to, to throw the ball to Jason McKee, our fullback, in the flat. Uh, it's a hard play action. And, um, and they covered Jason pretty well. Um, Hawk covered him really well. And, and Desmond did a good job of setting up the safety and, and getting open. I mean, it's one of those throws that you just try to get it out there as fast as you can and hit him in stride and give him a chance to score. Four-man rush. Favre's going to launch one into the end zone. Jump ball. And it is intercepted in the end zone by Brandon McGowan. And the game will end with a fifth turnover. Yeah, I felt like we, we should have won the ball game. I give credit to Chicago. Um, we made a lot of mistakes. Um, they capitalized. Um, give them credit. They earned it. We didn't take care of business, and, 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 that's, and that's why we lost the game. I'm sure they feel good about themselves. I, I fully understand how this works. We, we, we were glorified for four weeks, and, and now they, they get it this week, and, and, they, and they deserve it. But uh, we, we, we need to clean our own house right now. It, it, it's, it's sloppy, and we need to get it cleaned up. This was a... Uh... You know, as, as much of a must win as you can get for us and um, we needed the momentum we needed the confidence um, I thought our guys on both sides of the ball uh, came out and, and played with heart and with character and uh, that's what I'm most excited about well, two and three is a lot better than one and four we're not too bad in the division now no one and one in our division uh, I know what's gonna happen now you know we gotta get one before you can get two so we're on a good roll and the Packer winning streak ends at eight and it's their first defeat of the season and the Chicago Bears are very much alive